Hello guys, my name is Anna and I'm from Ukraine. I have started vlogging after the brutal Russian invasion. It was not my choice, but I felt I need to explain more about real life in my country during these challenging times. So if you support Ukraine, join the channel, become my friend and get the updates. And of course, help us fight the informational war. And today I want my vlog to be more of a vlog style and I'm ready to share with you some experience that not many of you have and I want to tell you more about the curfew. What is it? Did something change after the start of the invasion? What do we do during the curfew? And honestly, when I think about myself as this war generation, I recollect the stories of great-grandparents and grandparents we had these awful terms like children of war, generation of war, and never have I thought that I will belong to this generation because of Russian terrorism. If you're not yet subscribed and you agree that Russia must be defeated and you want to see that pretty soon, please subscribe and share. So what is a curfew for those of you who don't know? Lucky people! This is a time very often at night when you're not allowed to go out because of the martial law, because it's war or some other things may be the reason, like an epidemic, I don't know, some strikes and other stuff. We did have a lot of training during the COVID pandemics because there were periods when people were encouraged not to go out without a specific reason, but at least it was... Uh, all over the world, it was not that strict, it changed very quickly and uh, here curfew began together with the Russian invasion. Many people felt really bad during nights, your anxiety, your fear grows greater, that's why orcs like targeting us at dawn or at night when people are specifically vulnerable. At the very beginning of war, curfew began really early, like 8 p.m. or something like that. And I remember meeting my relatives who left Kiev on the second day of the invasion to spend some time with me in Volyn region, which is a semi-safe zone in the western part of Ukraine, and how worried I was if they managed to come before the curfew, because otherwise they will stay somewhere in the car on the streets, or we did not know what will happen. Of course, there is no criminal responsibility for breaking the curfew because it's not in the codexes or elsewhere, but all the Ukrainian regions still have this curfew. The time of uh, it can differ from region to region. Closer to front lines, they have longer curfew. Further from front lines, for example, as in case with my city, we have a shorter curfew. It begins at 12 p.m. and ends in 5 in the morning, which is literally a normal time to spend at home. I do not typically walk in this period. But there are also regions like Luhansk and Donetsk where curfew is all the time. You're not advised to leave. Sometimes it can get longer if a special military operation, I mean in this positive meaning, cleaning the territory out of orcs uh, takes place. For example, when uh, Kiev uh, was protecting itself and was taking away Russian orcs who invaded it at the very beginning of uh, the war, people were advised not to go out during the weekend because there were fights in the streets. Can you imagine in the 21st century? Subscribe to follow more updates and to demonstrate your solidarity with Ukrainian people and our allies fighting together against Russian terrorism and for democracy and freedom of choice and respect of human life and dignity. So it was a very challenging time here in my region. We did not experience that, but up to now you will have lots of police patrolling the streets and um, you can walk, of course, some people have permissions. These are doctors, transport drivers and others. They have um, permission that they will show and it explains the reasons why they walk or they drive in times of a curfew. 
if you don't have that permit and you will be stopped it's likely that nothing bad will happen to you but police has the right to check you to check your documents to search your bags if you have something or your car and all people treat that with understanding at least i have not heard about any like serious conflicts in many regions that are not severely torn by war people more often ask for curfew to uh, stop there are lots of petitions there are lots of people who say we don't need it anymore there are no specific reasons if something happens we are ready to return back to it but why do we have it and here is a story i'm ready to share with you but i'm not going to give into detail Recently, I was coming back from Poland with my friend by a car and it was during the curfew. Um, after we crossed the border, we were allowed by a Ukrainian custom officer to continue our trip. And later we were stopped at one of the blog posts. They were asking for the reason. We showed them the tickets and that we are coming back home. Sometimes they tell you, well, you can stand at the side of the road, wait for the end of the curfew and then continue your trip. But in our case, police officers were kind or maybe we, the girls, were cute and they allowed us to continue moving. And then on our way, I see a lot of beautiful vehicles moving. And my driver, my friend, Marta, says oh my god this must be some tractors coming or other stuff to the field and i look at them and i realize it's not exactly tractors it's something more valuable something more important for the future of ukrainian victory and one of the reasons why we have curfew in for example the western part of ukraine that is not so often targeted but that receive lots of your supplies and lots of your supports super thank you for that guys one of the reasons for this curfew that we don't actually know what where and why is moving don't worry i did not tell you anything specific neither location neither what that was but the reason is indeed beautiful i hope that soon all my war experiences will turn into my war memories this is also a traumatic experience but it's always good to have it in the past once again it's very weird to feel yourself as a generation of war and that we have so many children of war and that we've learned so many new experiences let me know what are the other things of the everyday ukrainian life that may seem ordinary to me are interesting and unusual to you maybe you want to know something more about martial laws mobilization i don't know traveling let me know in the comments and thank you so much for your support subscribe to my instagram i'm pretty active there join my threads twitter and discord community introduce yourself to our beautiful t-shirt hoodies and caps with patriotic messages that work well as conversation starters all the links are below this video Thank you for buying me coffees, becoming my patrons and helping me film more and speak more about Ukraine. This is extremely important. Enjoying our army of resilience against Russian propaganda, Russian disinformation and Russian evil. And once again, thank you for being friends. Slava Ukraini!